When I buy a single sensor like a TMP36 from a manufacturer and install it, it already comes with a built-in bias. It's got a manufacturing uh, characteristic that leads to it not reading quite exactly right. So if I took my first sensor and put it into an environment which had a, a known temperature of 24 and a half degrees, I might over time see a bunch of measurements that looked something like this. So this is telling me that my individual sensor doesn't have a lot of variability in the measurements that it returns. It's giving me a pretty stable temperature reading, but that stable temperature reading is wrong by about one degree positive. Now, if I made this measurement, I could correct that knowing that it's off by one degree. I could take all of the, all of the results and reduce them by one degree and wind up sitting pretty close right on that line. That is if I actually calibrated sensor one and knew that it had a bias of plus one. I could repeat that uh, test with sensor number two and I might wind up with a bunch of little circles like this over time. And that would tell me that sensor number two has a bias of about negative a half a degree C. Now, if I was interested in calibrating sensor one and sensor two, I could do that by measuring this bias and using that to shift the data back towards the known value to make some adjustments. In that case, the only uncertainty I would have left would be the uncertainty associated with the scatter in the data from that particular sensor because I'd have taken out this bias. That's expensive. That requires some trained personnel to go and actually make that test measurement and to make it again later on because you need to keep this calibration up to date. So that's a little more difficult. It takes extra work so it's going to cost extra money. But if we did that we could find that maybe the standard deviation on here is maybe 0.2. So two standard deviations would give us an uncertainty of maybe 0.4 degrees Celsius instead of the considerably larger uncertainty. Now if I met, went and measured with sensor number three and I wound up down here, then sensor number three has also got a negative bias and its negative bias might be minus 0 0.9 degrees C. So if I took that one and calibrated it back to the mean I could get a pretty good estimate out of sensor number three as well. But if I'm manufacturing products, like this thing, for example, if I'm manufacturing products, I don't want to individually calibrate every single consumer product necessarily. So I'd like to know what's the uncertainty if I just went and took a random sensor off the shelf and put it into my product and used it to make measurements with. Well, if I had sensor number one and two and three, that gives me some idea of the spread. But three independent samples isn't enough to give me some statistical data. So I'd need to keep on going and take a whole lot more measurements with a whole lot more sensors. And I'd wind up with a whole lot more data points all over here. And if I wanted to estimate the uncertainty that I'd get by just picking a random sensor, then that uncertainty for any uncalibrated sensor would wind up being equal to two times the standard deviation 
of all points from many sensors. Now doing this experiment, that would involve a lot of measurements. And we'll do something similar to that with only six sensors uh, in, the, in the active learning sessions. More reasonably, you might depend on the manufacturer to have already done this and to go and get that uncertainty from the manufacturer's data sheet. And that's what the value on the data sheet means. It's not just the scatter for any individual sensor, it's the scatter associated with selecting any one of the sensors out of the manufactured collection. So what it's coming back to is most of the time, for most practical engineering purposes, if you are just installing a device and counting on it to make decent measurements for you, then you really need to go back to that manufacturer's data sheet and use the information that they've got by making measurements over many sensors from their production line to tell you what the uncertainty is if you just plug it in and don't calibrate it. And that's often the most economical way to operate is to rely on the manufacturer's quality control to give you sufficient accuracy that you don't need to do additional calibration.